these videos were made several months ago and within the first seven hours of flight. This was before I had the engine out, or at least after I thought I had it fixed. But I thought it would be helpful to anybody considering the F-Lite because I think it has a lot of really nice qualities, even though, as I said, it's not the paramotor for me. So the F-Lite is now back at the dealer. I'll be looking for a new paramotor, and hopefully I can answer any questions you might have. So the first time I went through all the details on the Nirvana F-Lite, I was all over the place. It was a mess. So anyway, here's a new and improved version. Of course, you'll never see the other version. Uh, excuse the noise in the background. I hope that's not distracting, but they're doing some construction. All right, here it goes. I'm going to start with the, the front of the Nirvana F-Lite. This is the harness, obviously. And there's attachment points on the shoulder straps, chest strap, just like normal. Uh, it does have a waistband here. Uh, you're supposed to keep that pretty, pretty snug. Uh, not incredibly tight, but snug. It really gives you a, a feeling like you're, you're really one with this machine, so to speak. And then you have your leg straps down here. Two, two attachment points on each side. On the seat, what I found, and to me this was a bit of a distraction, there's very little padding here. Uh, I put in a two inch, very soft foam, uh, just like you'd make a cushion, and it makes a big difference. There's not a lot of pressure right at the, uh, under my legs here, in the thighs. So that has really helped. And you just access it through here, there's a Velcro here, you just access the interior. You also, when you do that, open that up, you can adjust the length of your, your straps here. One of the things I also noticed, and I was told this beforehand, is there's no padding right here in your backrest. Neat logo. But if you cover that up with padding, you'll lose that neat logo. So you will get some vibration, no doubt about it. Uh, there is a way to reduce that. Again, you could put a padding over here, uh, however you want to attach it. But I actually wear a kind of a harness on my back that Ryan from Paragenaline gave me, and that really helps quite a bit. I'll show you a picture of that. There's a lot of different areas that the harness and seat are adjustable. Obviously, you have your straps here, adjusting the tightness. I keep it pretty snug. I also keep the, as I mentioned, the waistband snug. Uh, you can adjust the height of the seat, whether you want to sit down more into it or more upright. Uh, also, on your swing arms here, you can adjust the height of those swing arms, whether you want it really high or you can have them lower. So I just removed two screws from here and here and that gives you access, access to behind this panel and you can see here this is your adjustment right here for the height of the seat uh, there are some color coatings here that are just guidelines you really want to do a hang test but you do have access a little bit easier to your fuel pump uh, your ignition coil uh, electricals things like that but you can see that engine uh, vibration comes directly through here this carbon frame to this back. Okay, towards the engine side here, one of the things that I did do is take off the shroud that was right here. It really looked cool, but it really restricted your access to the car and to the engine in general. And you can see a picture right here of that shroud. Pretty cool just all carbon, it would go right about, oh, you can't see it that well, I'll, I'll get another picture of it. So on this shroud, you can see where the air filter was, right here, that would go right in this area, and there's a new air filter. It did increase the amount of air coming into the car, so it did make everything a little bit more lean. I did enrich in everything by about an eighth of a turn, so counterclockwise, one eight turn. First started with the low end, uh, and then I did the high end of the carb. Uh, when I checked the spark plug, it was a little bit lean, uh, so I did. That's when I also have enriched the high end. We'll see how that is after my next flight. So even though I have much better access to the engine without that shroud there, 
There is a little bit of a trick getting to the head bolts. I have to take out this cooling shroud. There is a special, well, I have the, the tools, but you, to get into these bolts underneath here, it's not the easiest thing. Not horrible, but again, not the easiest thing. Uh, I did find that the head bolts were still very tight. Uh, quick getting close to 10 hours and I tighten it up just very slightly, not much. One of the things I really like, especially if you're gonna tear down and, and set up the paramotor lock, is the propeller. This is a tripop, of course. There's one single screw right here. You have this tool supplied by Nirvana. Just slips right in. And then you can tighten, loosen it, really easy. In the beginning, I'd obviously check it. I do that in the pre-flight anyway. Uh, it was maybe slightly loose after the first couple of flights, but since then it stayed really tight. Never got to the point where I, I became worried. So really nice, uh, really makes things easy. I'm kind of wondering why more manufacturers don't do that. Perhaps they don't think it's safe, I have no idea. But so far it's been great. The frame here inserts into the carbon body. You do have some snaps. Uh, better view over here. So each section goes in with these snaps right here. The netting is tightened with these inserts here. Again, they snap in. The netting inserts are in these spots here. You push it in, you can hear it snap into place. If you push in, press the button right here, then it'll pull out. So you can actually get a very tight netting. However, you'll notice that it's really easy for your hand to go through. These are called twist air struts. This helps to compensate for torque. Um, being belt driven, uh, the propeller turns as I'm facing it here, kind of clockwise. I uh, pretty much go to the right, and that's how I uh, climb out. It helps a little bit. Uh, again, I have no idea what it was like, what, what it would be like to fly without these. Uh, I'm sure it does help. Still in level flight, uh, I get a little bit of uh, turning to the right. Uh, again, it could be a lot worse without them. So I think it helps uh, to some extent. I think it's really nice. Uh, does it completely eliminate torque? No. Uh, I don't think any of the devices, even on the, the uh, Scout, I, I don't think it completely eliminates torque, but I think it's really helpful. You can see the throttle here, a little different. I was used to using my top two fingers for the throttle like that, whereas here, use the my bottom two fingers, and then I use my brake, my top finger. So a little bit different. I've since gotten used to that. It was pretty interesting in the beginning. Uh, I would be thinking I was uh, throttling when I was braking, I was braking, I was throttling, so I survived and I'm quite used to it now. The nice thing is that if there's a magnet attachment right there, you can see that area. Just really nice to put it, snap it on, out of the way, not dragging it, not trying to figure out where to hang it on your netting. And I think that's just a really simple, clever idea. The other thing is, as a, if this is only an electric start, is that the on-off is at the same button. So you, you start it and kill switch. If you start it and it doesn't start, you do have to wait three or four seconds in order to re-engage. You can't keep pushing it. Also, coming in for a landing, if you stop it at the last minute you want to start it, you just go right at the same, same thumb action there. Again, a little bit getting used to in the beginning because that thumb kind of wants to do weird unconscious things. <laughs> and I did turn it off a couple of times when I didn't mean to. So you can see here the fuel tank pretty much integrated right into the frame. So there is not an easy way as far as I know to take out that fuel tank. The other thing I would say, a minor criticism is getting access to the fuel tank here through this nozzle, uh, through the filler. It goes in, then down, and if I pour the gas in too quickly, it actually will pour out. So I gotta be a little careful of that. This is your battery connection here. Now we just go to the back here for a moment. The strap here, where your 
and do Velcro for your battery itself. I normally have this battery unplugged. I just plugged it in now. Just so you can see, over here on the other side, you have your on-off switch for the battery. Above that is your, your primer pump, which works really well. Get over here. This is your end gadget where you have your cylinder head temperature, the exhaust gas temperature, your remaining battery voltage, and it does have a fuel indicator which I do not have hooked up. Actually, I just use this mirror. Low tech, but easy to use. Up here there's a little pouch just for carrying, well, at least I carry some tools here. So in the pouch you have a couple of tools supplied by Nirvana. This is to tighten or loosen the, the belt. So you see it's right here. I have not done it. The belt has been fine. Uh, there's a nut here you loosen and then you tighten or loosen that belt. I also noted on the netting here with the swing arms, these would come back in the resting position and you could see it hit the portion of the netting right here. I started to notice a little bit of a fray right in this area. So I just put a little reinforcement there. Not the prettiest thing, but I didn't want that to slowly fray and then basically snap and break. Uh, but I think that will do it. I'm also kind of careful. Uh, don't let it come back too quickly, but that should help protect that netting. So the F-Lite is a really compact, light, 47 pounds E-Start, and it actually feels a lot lighter on my back. The harness is highly adjustable, but it's really important to get it right, or it's just not gonna feel good. But again, uh, a lot of a lot of options there on the, on the harness. Dislikes, definitely that engine vibration. It is significant. Uh, much better with the back padding than I wore. And as far as the clutch, that's really a personal preference. I tend to like having a clutch. So in part two, we'll start the engine on the ground, take off, and see how it flies. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two.